new week, new documenting the journey. Welcome back. On this channel, I document my journey, building my brand, exchange life. We mainly sell custom merchandise. If you want to see what we sell, then you can go into the description there. You can find my brand. In the last 30 days, we did 139,000 euros in sales, which is 32% down from the previous period. Um, I'm sitting here in Cape Town currently. As you can see right here, very cool view. It's a really cool place. I'm really enjoying my time here. A lot of people to meet, a lot of other brand owners and people that do cool shit. So it's a great place to be. Let me adjust this real quick. So the first chapter of this video will be me talking about the brand, basically sharing what's going wrong, what's going right. I do this every week. I try to at least. And the second part will be the uh, lifestyle and personal development that comes with it. Because as you might imagine, building a business comes with that as well. So yeah, uh, hopefully this helps you out in any way. So I have my notes over here, which I will use to figure out what I should talk about. So <laughs> I don't go on full rants. Um, yeah, so, so let's start out with this week. To be honest, we've had many unprofitable days for the past week. So kind of in the beginning of February, after the January dip, right after Q4, I kind of thought that, you know, I'm making this work again. I'm improving a lot. The ROAS was going up. I was like, damn, I'm pretty good at this. And then I was kind of forgetting that Valentine's Day was going up. And because of this, the buyer's intent goes up as well. So this is why conversion rate was going up, ROAS was going up. And then after Valentine's Day, it just fucking dropped off a cliff. And this is probably what most brand owners won't tell you. It isn't only 10K days and like profit and shit like this. I w had a big drop. I even had unprofitable days. Most days probably out of the last week have been unprofitable. It's part of the game that we play, you know. The, the market just plays a big role with e-commerce, especially with a gifted product like I have. My products are mainly bought as gifts. So the buyer's intent is very important. So yeah, losing money part of the game and to be honest I kind of love it in a way because I notice now that I actually have to get better like I have to put in a lot of work to make it work right now because the buyer's intent is so low so I have to make up for it by being better by improving landing pages by making better ads by lowering the cost per click on my ads by lowering the CPMs by increasing my conversion rate by creating new products that are more unique and that people will buy instead of the things that they won't buy right now if they land on my site. So I actually kind of enjoy it because I actually have to put in a lot of work and get better. Whereas in Q4, the buyer's intent is so high that you can get away with a lot of things, which you cannot anymore during this period, especially if, for example, you're in a downturn of a market and maybe in the future it will even be worse. A lot of people say it's like one of the worst periods in e-com right now. I'm not sure, but, you know, for me, it's definitely a down period, which, again, I'm enjoying because I need to get better. So I'm working a lot on the landing pages. I'm working on better ads. I'm working on new angles. I'm working on trying different platforms like TikTok. All of these things, I have to actually really get better. So that is kind of cool because I'm learning a lot. And then also I realized that, like, I cannot really lose. I've talked about this before, but for me money isn't a big thing so i might be very profitable in q4 for example that won't affect my mood and then i will again be unprofitable after valentine's day and i don't feel worse like i do not really care about money because as long as on average in the year i have like 5k a month in profit in my bank account bro I can do whatever the fuck I want. I can go to Cape Town, I can be here in this co-working space and I'm working all day, every day anyways, like no matter what I make or what I do, I just like to improve. And for me, I can always live this kind of life with the skills that I've built up now. So I'm not really worried about it too much. I'm actually like enjoying the ride. And then also like I go home, like I'll do anything for this shit. I'm all in, there is no other way for me. So let's say it really completely all falls apart now then I'll just go home and I'll sit with my parents again I've done it before I'll do it again I'll make it work again like there is no other way so for me 
losing what's the worst case scenario if you doom scenario it for me that's going home i'm lucky to have parents that can provide me with food and can give me a bed there is no losing for me which is a no like there's another philosophy i have about that a lot of us that live grow up in like a first world country i f i think not going all in is ungrateful because we have nothing to lose we should provide a better life for for example our parents or give back for the that that they gave us like the, the ability to not be able to lose because we always have a foundation we can fall back on so go and make it happen and give back to your parents for it but so that's another point like i don't really care about it because i feel like i cannot really lose and then because i'm documenting it right here i feel that for me i can turn every loss into a win because if i lose and i share it with you guys then you can learn from it and it will yeah build a better connection with you as the viewer because you're like, ah, it's not only ups, it's downs. Like, I have too, because if you're a viewer, you'll have downs too. And if you're on a Twitter, you'll be made to believe that everyone is be <laughs> getting fucking rich in, in fucking before they're 21 and they drive Lambos and shit. But that's not reality. If you're really building a brand, you'll have down periods. You'll lose money. And you'll be like, ah, Tristan is like going through what I'm going through and you can relate with me more. It will build a better yeah, connection between you as the viewer and me sharing my journey so for me every loss is kind of a win in the same way because the more i have this theory the, the more you can share about your downs so the losses the higher you can share the wins without being like arrogant with it being ins inspiring because you show that you can also show the downs so it's like if your downs are here you can share ups that are here but if you never share downs and you just share the ups you're just an arrogant motherfucker so i think losses and sharing them <laughs> comes with a lot of upside so this is kind of how i'm dealing in my framework what how i'm handling like these down days or these losses or days where i lose money or down periods and i'll make it work again like it's picking back up by the way it's not like i'm <laughs> like just losing money so it is getting better again i'm improving things i'm figuring new things out because i'm getting better and i'll it'll be fine but this period after Valentine's, this short, like this week was just, you know, uh, what was a bad week where I lost money. So yeah, that that is uh, an interesting thing, an interesting part of the game, especially the e-com game, where it's not like you sign clients in an agency on a three to six month contract. You don't have this. You're reliant on individual customers that buy from you. So the buyer's intent and the state of the market has a lot of impact on this. Especially if you're selling a luxury like me, we're not really solving a problem. So, again, this is something interesting. Can I sell my product from a pro pro problem-solving perspective? You know, something I'm working on, trying to figure out. But, uh, yeah, for, for me, it impacts my product, especially because it's so giftable and not really problem-solving. You don't buy it because you're, like, wanting to lose weight or things like this. So it makes for an interesting, interesting battle to fight uphill again. So, yeah, that's really how I'm dealing with that. The second point that I wrote down was that... Um, I'm splitting up the brand on the front end. So basically I started the brand as merchandise for exchange students. So we started with hoodies with, for example, two flags. It took me three years to realize that this is not going to make me any money. I only lost money for three years because it's very niche. Not a lot of people can relate or understand it. So I figured I have to go broad. Also, the products I was selling was like hoodies. They have no margin. You cannot scale a brand on 20% margin. So I kept going, I kept trying new products, and at some point I found jewelry. And I found the angle of two homes. So this can be for many reasons. So this is what I'm going all in on, also on the new website. On the front end, it will be the jewelry, and then I'll have a separate landing page for the exchange student merchandise. I will still sell it, but this is products that are mainly sold through organic traffic. So this will come through, for example, the organic community. We have an organic community for the brand that it's still only for exchange students, which is a separate thing. And here, the followers find the merchandise and they will land on the landing page with all of the other merch as well. This way, the traffic from ads doesn't get confused by, hey, I'm not an exchange student. Can I buy this necklace, though? Which they can, but we want to make it as clear as possible. So this way, really build clear brand messaging and solve this problem. And let's see how that goes. I don't know. Like We're freestyling it all in the end. But I think this is a good idea. And 
this really makes it clear for who the brand is and for who it isn't. So, yeah, um, that is a question we got a lot. I'm reading my points, by the way, here. Because we did a post-purchase survey, uh, survey. Actually, it was a survey because I'm building a new website, like, like I said in the last video. And we sent out a survey to existing customers for feedback. And one of it was that it wasn't really clear for who it is and why. So this, uh, this way, I'm hoping to solve this. Also, by improving the landing pages. This is the biggest question. So this is what you want to answer instantly when somebody clicks on an ad and lands there. So I now edited the landing pages like this. I added some sections and really made sure that when a customer clicks on an ad, they understand for who it is, if it is for them or it isn't. So constantly improving the landing pages as well. It's a big lever for you to pull as an e-com brand because you want to increase the conversion rate or you want to, for example, make a customer want your product if they don't want it yet. And you can influence this a lot by, for example, your offer or your landing page. At first, I didn't really know what landing pages were and how can I do it for jewelry. But now that's getting more clear. You need to answer the biggest questions that people have before buying your product on your landing page. So figure out what it is for you. Um, the fourth point that I wrote down is that, so again, I have to improve now to make up for the buyer's intent being low. And one of the things that I'm trying out is like funny slash controversial ads. So these are ads with like a very obvious spelling mistake or something that is kind of like edgy or meme -y. So yeah, we're seeing some good results with this. The question is how controversial can you go? Like I have some great controversial IDs. I just don't know whether something is pushing it too much or not. But I guess as long as you don't get banned, then you're fine. Because for me, it's not like I have a huge brand anyways. Like, I'm not Nike. It won't damage my reputation. So I think I should mainly look at performance. But I don't know. Maybe not. This is something that I've yet to have decided because today I was flipping up some statics. And yeah, I was just... It's really pushing the boundaries. So I sent it to a few friends that have brands as well. Like, should I post this? Should I not? And some of them are like, yeah, just lounge it. So uh, this is cool. Some of these ads, by the way, that I didn't write this down, but I'm thinking about this, talking through it. Last Friday, I had an empty schedule and I just did what I felt like doing. And then I came up with the ID for this, this ad and then it works well. So it might be an ad that can move the needle and this was done based on an empty schedule. So I, I was talking through this with a friend as well. I think for me, I've noticed that it's good to do what I feel like doing and to not be like very, I have to do this then, 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 like plan out my whole day. I feel like if I just do what I feel like doing, I move the needle more than if I'm like militant on what I should work on and like burn myself out this way. So try it out maybe for yourself, one or two days a week where you're just empty and you just do, do what you feel like doing. If that is consuming content because you want to get better at, I don't know, building community, then do that. To maybe you get a new ID for your brand. If it's graphic designing because you have a new ad ID, then do that. That might move the needle. For me, this works. So, yeah, it's just something that I, that I came up with. Last week, I told you guys as well that I'm trying out TikTok with an agency. It is not working yet. I think the bottleneck right now is that we're spending most budget about 100 euros a day on testing on finding what works i think as soon as we found what works uh, you're not wasting as much money anymore on testing or the profit of the things that work make up for it so i uh, yeah i definitely want to give it a few more weeks to really try to push it to see if it works or not agency gave me a good offer as well so there's not really any risk from my side they gave me a guarantee so we should just try it and see if we can make it work but yeah as well with this, it's like when you try some new thing and it doesn't work instantly, don't just assume that it can't work. Like iterate, iterate on where you see a little bit of success or potential. Because I really believe that you can make anything work. It's just, you know, how bad do you want it and how bad are you improving to make it work. So we'll make it work. Give it a few more weeks. Let's see how it does. The next point that I wrote down is that email is starting to perform better. So I'm writing the weekly email campaigns myself right now. And in the last seven days, we had about 23% of the revenue coming from email, which is great. Again, last week I said that 
20% is good for my brand because I'm not dropping new products constantly. So this is good to be at 23%. Um, I'm seeing what works a little bit better now, adding some scarcity, some extra sales to the email. So yeah, uh, trying to get the revenue per email up every email that I send out, which is going well so far. The next point that I wrote down is that we're going to try out uh, some new ways to create creatives because right now we have a lot of the same kind of style and the same kind of creative. But these days with AI, you can do some cool shit and I'm not the hype guy like AI. Uh, but with AI, you can create very good voiceovers that, that really sound like like an actual storytelling voiceover, like a Fiverr fucking voice actor guy. So this way you can really come up with good stories from a copywriter, test different angles, um, use your existing raw footage to overlay it, and this way look at what works and test rapidly through new concepts. So I'm going to try that out. I think I will try this out with my agency that currently helps me out with TikTok because if they know what they're doing and they have a good copywriter, this can really move the needle and I can see ROI on this very quickly. So yeah, I'll keep you guys updated on how that goes. I'm seeing some issues with the oxidation of our sterling silver items. So I recently introduced sterling silver, like I told you guys last week, and we're seeing some problems now with the silver oxidating. So, bro, I'm not a jeweler. I'm now trying to find ways to solve this. I think it has to do with the plating, but we'll figure it out. The, yeah, well, the, the next thing that I'm working on, trying to spend a few hours on every day, one or two, is new products. So I told you guys I did the customer survey earlier this video. <clears throat> One of the reasons that customers also didn't buy yet was because they couldn't find pieces that they liked to wear. So I want to expand the product range so everyone that lands on there that can relate with the brand also can find a piece that we have uh, beautiful and can buy it. So yeah, I'm working on that. This is, by the way, I met a uh, guy in Tokyo, actually, a guy, very random story. I was on the elevator to the gym and then I saw this guy up there and I'm like, I have seen you in Bali before. So I started talking with him. So a guy from Germany, eight figure brand owner. By chance, I meet him in Tokyo on the way to the gym. Biggest city in the world. <laughs> fucking, fucking random. But I asked him, like, what do you now focus on? And one of the main things he focuses on, which is still for him as the now founder of the eight-figure brand is product. So one of the big levers that he still pulls and does himself where he specifically can make a difference without outsourcing it is the product. So product will always be a big lever to pull. So a good, good time investment as well for you to figure out unique products, unique angles, unique way, ways to sell products, new products, all of this. So that's an interesting learning as well. And then the last part I wrote down about the brand is that I added a section, I have custom products. And there were some questions in the post purchase about like when do I arrive, when does the item arrive in this? So I added a section to the site where a customer can see when they, in what date range they, they will receive the product. So that that's interesting as well. Um, again, making improvements to the site and stuff like this. So that's everything about the brand, about the e-com brand. Last video, I told you guys that I have a community with the brand as well. When I couldn't make pay that's work, I worked on de many different things. And one of it was an organic community, still focused on exchange students. Because like I said, the uh, brand also started for exchange students. We have about 137,000 followers now, reach multiple millions of people a month there organically. I learned at some point that e-com isn't the best way to monetize this community. So I built a platform. An exchange student needs a program to go on exchange with. So on this platform, you can find an exchange program to go abroad with. And basically, we as a community get people that are like, hey, I also want to go on exchange. So we send them to the platform. They get in contact with the program. And then the program gives us an affiliate for the student going. And it's all high ticket programs. So I figured out this is a way better way to monetize the community. You can see the revenue here. As you can see, um, back in September, when I launched the platform, the revenue was going up. I was still not making ads work for my brand. And then, as you can see, the dip is when I figured out that, hey, there's an opportunity here with the ads for my brand and I could possibly scale my e-com brand. So I went all in on that and kind of left that on the side. But it's really wasted potential. So 
I'm trying to find someone now that can partner up with me on this because uh, we're the biggest community for exchange students and this is a very interesting project. This can be a very long-term thing because it's organic and it's very relatable and very niche. So yeah, I'm in talks with different people now uh, to partner up with this. So I want to find a young, hungry person that can you know, really help me expand this to the full potential. And I have so many ideas, but I need someone that helps me implement it. And I, it can be an employee because I need an entrepreneur to be fucking all in it and to have upside as well. So uh, if you're not a principal agent problem, if you find someone and you hire them, and the outcomes don't align, they do the bare minimum. I need someone to fucking push this through like I did with the brand. So yeah, um, having calls with different people and really having some good potential in some of them. So let's see how that goes. It's really interesting. Um, really excited about that as well. Again, I'm still maintaining my focus because I'm finding a partner that will do all of the heavy lifting, but I will still be there as a guiding role and as you know the founder of it all. So let's see how that goes. And that's it mainly about the brand and then the community. And then lastly, I wrote some points down about <laughs> the other things that I'm doing, which is the videos and just self-development. So the last video actually did quite well, which it's funny to see because I had a theory on how to improve them. I didn't want to apply it. But then I, at some point I was like really considering it and talking with some friends here about it, some friends whose opinion I value. And I think that my long-term play is these videos. My long-term play is me putting myself out there, documenting the journey. My long-term play is my personal brand. I don't think my brand is as much of a long-term play or, as, or has as big of potential in where it can go and the outcomes it can create as my personal brand. So I should be sharing everything because it will, I think, I've decided be my thing for the next 50 years. So yeah, I'm gonna be sharing everything, I'm gonna imp be improving them and you know, a question then is like, what is enough? Because I think I've, I have the foundation and I have the potential to, to become like a big person in the space. But do I want that? Like, I think fame is one of the things, for example, that you cannot really turn around. So how how much do I want to, for example, make topic videos on how to do this, how to do that, to blow up my channel more? I don't think I will do it. So I, I'm trying to find a balance of how far I want to push it. And I think this way is good because you, you will stay low key. Like the mass market will never listen to me rant. I don't have to optimize every second of every video. So I think this is a great balance for me, but let's see how this will perform and how this will do in the long term. So that is an interesting thought. Um, I'm really enjoying my time here in Cape Town. I think it's a good balance between work and being productive and also meeting cool people that, you know, build cool shit and I, that I can relate with and that I have really good conversations with. I'm making some really good friends, I think, for the long term as well here. People that I'm getting to know better that I already knew, but also new people. Some guys with really cool and big brands that are like excited as well, like me, to talk about nerd ecom shit and ads and like, yeah, I think coming here was a very good decision because I think I will end up with some great new friends, relationships, but also like mentors that have done something similar to what I'm doing and that are excited to help me with it. And let's see how that goes, but yeah. I think this is a great place for me that I will definitely come back to. And then the last thing that I wrote down for this week, more so to do with self-development, is that for me, I always look at myself as like a disciplined person, but then I notice that at home it's easy to be disciplined because there is not really much to do when I'm in the Netherlands, for example. But then when I'm traveling, I actually have to be disciplined to, you know, keep my habits in place because there is so much distraction and ways to lose them. So, for example, my screen time was quite high in the past few weeks. So I'm like, bro, this is because I'm lacking on my habits that I usually always do. That's why it's higher. It's, it's, it was like a three hours or some shit. And I'm like, this shit needs to go down, you know. Maybe four. Yeah, maybe three to four. I don't want to lie to myself. <laughs> so I was like, you know, I need to not forget my habits and the things that brought me here. Which is, for me, a few... To name a few, like no phone before lunch, I leave it off, uh, app blockers for after lunch, when I use my phone, only get into bed when I sleep, 
so not when I want to read or meditate because then I'm like still thinking I have to do something but then often when I hit the bed I still crash and then I don't have like very high quality sleep so when I'm sleepy also stop whatever I'm doing and actually go to bed meditate in the couch before I'm sleepy so I can actually meditate every day read during my lunch instead of taking my phone and scrolling those are a few habits that I'm you know putting back into place that I think are very healthy that maybe make me more stressed or feel a bit off when I'm traveling I think if I keep these in place I can be as productive and effective when traveling if I don't I think I lose it a bit and I get a bit stressed over time if I'm doing it for too long so yeah that's kind of it for this week brand updates business updates and some other thoughts in this part of the video that's what I do in the second part I just do it whenever I feel like it so like lifestyle and self-development updates so yeah hopefully this is helping you out in any way come along with me on my journey hopefully you're building cool shit too send me messages about what you're building ask me any question and yeah I'd love to see what you guys do so that's it for this week and I'll see you guys next week but then in the brand update, you sit down in front of the camera and you were like very philosophical, yeah. you know? Yeah, I'm telling you, man. So I got into that's why I should show more of this shit. Yeah, you should do more of that. Because then people say, I'm not only serious. Exactly. You're actually quite young inside. Yeah. You want to uh, make more lifestyle content? No, so the first part of my video, which is the biggest part, it's like me sitting down talking about the brand. Yeah. But certainly. like Felix just said, in that part I'm like very serious because it's just me reading down everything that's going on with the business. But it, it, me in real life is more like fucking around, you know? It's less serious. Not, not literally. Yeah, not literally. One of the things that I... Oh, it's this way. One of the things that I do every two weeks is journal. And I used to journal off and on, like sometimes daily or like you know, every few days. And I've noticed that for me, there is not that much new after a few days and I can keep it interesting with, for example, prompts or in a way that, you know, I can write something new every few days, but I just don't really stick to it. These videos are somehow also kind of a journal publicly or something for me. So in a way I am already every day kind of trying to write down what is going on and what can I talk about in my video. So it wasn't really enough for me to stick to my journaling every day or like so often. So what I do now is I do it every two weeks and I kind of call it like critically journaling where I just kind of dump all of my thoughts on my paper and based on that ask myself questions if I something like really bothers me or something comes up a lot. So. I think for you guys, I don't know if you do any of this, but it's really been helpful for me to kind of process what's going on in my head, process what I'm thinking about and kind of deal with it in a way because I'm a guy that thinks a lot. There's a lot going on in my mind and if I don't do this, I kind of like push it away and you know leave it there. I kind of came up with an analogy yesterday and this is another topic, but what can like psychedelics do for you? Me personally, I've never done any drugs, but I'm not someone that stops myself or completely distances myself or something. I always think you should, should have an open mind. And one of the arguments I had, and this is kind of journaling, but maybe psychedelics in like another level is where, you know, in your head, a lot of things are going on and you can kind of like delete them. So like files on your laptop you can delete them and put them in the trash can but then actually when you open the trash can you see that the files are still there and take up space on your computer unless you right click your trash can and fully delete them so this is like journaling or maybe psychedelics on another level you delete the files completely from your computer so they do not take up space anymore and yeah i think for me this is a good thing because otherwise things just kind of pile up in my head uh, I, I, you know, I always, I've noticed for me there's always something on my mind I worry about, so I should kind of be critical, but are they actually like things that are something to worry about, or is this just the one thing, for example, that takes up my head at all times? 
and it's always one thing I've noticed. So, yeah, for for you guys, I don't know if it's relevant, but journal. Try to do this every two weeks or every week or whatever is just working for you. These self-development things are like whatever works for you works. Don't let yourself be convinced that there is like one perfect way or that somebody is right or you should completely copy someone else. But in these videos, I just wanted to have shared this with you. And I think writing down your thoughts is a good thing. And this is how it works for me. So do with it whatever you want. And I'm, oh, I'm here sitting in the gym, by the way. I've showed you guys this last time, but it's a really cool place. There is like... A there, there is a gymnastics place and then over here there's like pedal courts behind here. Yeah, very cool place. So I'm just gonna, it's Sunday now, do some more work. Oh, that's a good one. On Sunday I try to not work. But for example, today I felt like just journaling and this whole morning, a few hours I spent just writing down some things and thinking and plotting and kind of going over my vision board and recalibrating myself I guess for the week like Sundays is I guess good to plot and remind yourself what you're doing it for and what does that look like and do I want to expand my vision board and now I feel like doing some work so I do some work so on, on Sunday I just do whatever the fuck I want but I try not to work because otherwise you are wrapped in like the wheel right but you never take a step out of it to like see what you're doing it for, what are you even doing? And I think like Sundays are good for this, for journaling helps with this and doing some other reflection and plotting and thinking about the future and thinking about what you're doing and why. And just relaxing a bit as well, right? Don't get trapped into the always having to be productive, which is for me easy. For me, I get trapped in the, I need to be productive. Why am I doing something fun? Why am I doing nothing? I should be productive, but this is, I think, a toxic mindset that will, that we as young people will regret in the future. But let's see, I'm not sure.